uh, let's 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 move from the bad news and yeah. talk very very, very briefly about well, shortlass yeah it is something shortlass so shortlass just raised three million dollars right for four million dollars oh sorry <laughs> so they raised four million dollars and they want to expand their operations in nigeria yeah. yes okay so what are the talking points you spotted okay if you um the ride hailing space can't i mean it hasn't always been very favorable for nigerian startups um and then they are uh, last time the raise was 2021 and they said they wanted to do a pan-african expansion um but now they are leaning towards a nigerian expansion which is a bit curious to me because the ceo says they have the infrastructure that they can easily plug in to expand across africa so why are you not doing all of that um between 2021 and this time a lot has changed in the macroeconomic environment so i'm making a guess that it's not as easy as they expected or as they thought to expand across africa and between that period, we've also seen some funny developments. Swivel went public through a spark, made a few acquisitions, even tried to walk back on um, one of the acquisitions. I think that was Volt that they made. Um, so we've also seen plenty of car trying to expand to Canada. Trips, please. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, trips now. Yeah, trips trying to expand to Canada and now tripping. Mm. Ah, don't leave me, don't leave me. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just you also. <laughs> but yeah, they tried to expand to Canada. They made some acquisitions. I think in Uganda, um, two countries in Africa. I think yeah, Uganda and Ghana, Starbucks and one other. Um, but we can't really say that these guys are killing it so far. So um, I'm, so I, I'm a bit um, skeptical, rightly so. Skeptical about it, but I kind of have some trust in Shotlass. So Shotlass is one of those companies that had to bootstrap for a very long time before raising funds. And they were, um, I mean, when you bootstrap and stay alive for that long, it kind of helps you to think clearly. You you just use um, what you have to get what you need. So mm. I'm holding out to that. Okay, yes, you survived without funding. Yeah. And you can do a lot more now you have funding. But the reality on ground, let's talk reality things, is that it is hard for you to build a ride hailing startup. Um, I was curious this morning, I asked Willie, how many local ride hailing successes do we have? Right. So, mm. is this, what does this say about the ride hailing space? And even not just in Nigeria, but globally, we've seen Uber burn through a lot of money and they are only trying to now get to profitability. Mm. We've seen Lyft. I think Lyft is now valued at less than the amount they have raised. So this shows you that it's not a very easy place to play in. Um, we can't say for now, like I, I, I don't have a crystal ball to say that you guys are going to succeed or not, but I'm holding out hope that they are able to succeed mm. and um, hopefully prove that the Nigerian ride healing space is um is like what investing in so yeah um shout okay. out to trips sorry um short last for um a a new for new investments but um it's not it's not a straightforward road ahead yes them. i mean okay. i believe they know that already i, I wish them all the best so I yeah they do well. yeah so yeah to to help startups like short last do well to prevent more companies shutting down. Mm. Last year, the Nigerian Startup Act came into existence. And yeah, I think we should sign off with mentioning this. They've elected members of the council, the National Council for Digital Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Mm. And of course, they now have a representative forum, people that were representing the council. And we have names like Davison Oturu, managing partner at Nubia Capital. Mohammed Ibrahim Jega, yeah, he's the co-founder of Dominion Blockchain Solutions. We have Eloho Omame, the mm. co-founder and general partner at First Check Africa, a notable person in the tech space. Founder and CEO of Outsource Global, Amal Hassan. And yeah, those are like the four representatives of the consultative program. Why am I mentioning their names? Because this, we, it's not enough to have to just have that law over there. It's not enough to say that the president has signed it. Yeah, we've celebrated it. We've 
we've said all the good things he can do but that's where the work starts engaging these guys and these guys are the private sector stakeholders that you can actually engage with so i'm not saying you should bludgeon them to death with questions and reaching out to them unsolicitedly but give them a little bit of close marking and these are the kind of people that can help you engage with the government whenever there's any issue whenever you need something uh you have questions asked but it's not just them the entire nigerian startup act team so i think it's an important initiative but unlike government initiative where you expect them to drop it on your lap i don't think it's going to happen that way you probably have to be the one to fight for it so yeah you can check out the video with uh we did with the special assistant to the nigerian president on innovation also what uh sorry thing about yeah and you will hear him clearly asking you what can you do about it so bolu what can you do about startup act <laughs> <laughs>